So welcome, welcome to this webinar. Today we're going to look at the aerial Digimap collection. My name is Ian Holmes. I'm joined today with my colleague Tom Armitage. We're both part of the support team here uh, and we primarily support the Digimap service. So after this webinar you'll get uh, a link to the recording. We're recording this webinar and we'll put it on our YouTube channel. Any questions and answers that come up during the webinar we will transcribe and there'll be links to that. Uh, there'll be a link to the slides that we go through today and also the aerial page on our help system. And at the very end of this webinar, when you close, when you exit the webinar, a little feedback form will pop up. It's only got five or six questions in it. Please, if you do have a couple of minutes, please just uh, fill that in. And um, any comments you've got about this webinar or suggestions for future ones, please let us know. Okay, so just before we go into the webinar itself, we're just going to run a quick poll uh, just to find out who we've got attending today. It's really helpful for us to know who we've got actually uh, attending the webinar. So, um, yeah, please tick the option that's most appropriate, and um, that's great. Okay, so we've got some support staff and some postgraduates on the, on the uh, webinar today, so that's great. Thank you very much for doing that. Okay, so a little bit about the aerial Digimap collection. This was a new venture that we, we went on with Get Mapping. Um, they're the data provider for all of our aerial imagery, and we first launched the service in October 2016, so it's been running for around 18 months now. Um, we chose Get Mapping as the supplier because they've got really good coverage of the whole country uh, down to 25 centimeter resolution, so it's the most detailed national coverage that's available. And in terms of the service, it's around a quarter of a million uh, one kilometer tiles. They're all in JPEG format and uh, we get regular updates from get mapping to this data. So in terms of the updates, we've had three updates so far since the service was launched and it relates to the data for, that was flown by get mapping in 2015, 2016 and uh, we recently got 2017 data. There's some stats on screen there that show the amounts, uh, the volumes of data that have been updated for the 2016. 16 data we've only received the updates for Scotland so far we should be getting Wales and England soon the 2017 data we, we've only recently got this very recently so we've not even had a chance to look to see how many tiles have been updated um, so again we'll be getting this into the service as soon as we can so you've got the most up-to-date data available now before we jump into uh, looking at the actual service just wanted to cover a few uses of the data so as well as it being fascinating the aerial photography data also has numerous uses across multiple disciplines so in archaeology aerial photography is now one of the key resources allowing individuals to get a better understanding of archaeological sites it's actually one of the most important ways that archaeologists now identify new sites because it allows the user to identify features that are often not visible on the ground so things like shadow markings different ground characteristics so if it's been flown when it's really dry you can see really arid areas where the soil depth's not very thick. So it's a really good way of identifying new uh, archaeological sites. In other areas, so in the ecological environment, so aerial photography is really good for land use studies. And, and can, you know, the good thing about the photography is that you can use it to study larger areas and, and use that to identify specific site visit locations that you want to go out and visit when you're out in the field so it gives you that broad level of understanding of an area and allows you to identify specific sites it's also used a lot in the urban planning and infrastructure environment um, and it's vital to understanding the infrastructure and land use in a particular or proposed location site and again there's quite a lot of 3d modeling happens these days and it's a really good way of visualizing the impact of proposed developments on the environment and that sort of nicely feeds into architecture and landscape design um, so similarly with with architectural studies you can combine multiple data sets from digimap and create realistic 3d models um, to assess the impact of changes to existing architecture so lots of different applications now support 3d modeling be it gis and cad um, and there's lots of ways of creating these models and aerial photography is a really good way of creating realistic models based on on the different data sets so we've got a couple of examples like i say most uh, applications will do this now so here's an example using the qgis gis package the uh, world's leading open source gis system 
the list of data sets that have been included to create this model is shown on the right hand side in that little box at the bottom right hand side but you'll see that the aerial photography there adds some real context to this model but we've got a bunch of other data sets that have been created we've not had to do anything to these data sets these have all been downloaded from digimap and then added to QGIS and just use a simple plugin to generate this 3d model Here's another example. This is of um, a quarry in the Lake District around Elterwater, if anyone's familiar with it. Um, and this is using an InfraWorks software, which is part of the Autodesk suite of applications. So BIM, CAD, uh, architecture type stuff. This is where uh, you would see InfraWorks being used. <clears throat> and here you can really see the effect of the scale of this quarrying that's taken place in the center of the image <clears throat> and the spoil heap that's been generated towards the right hand side there. Finally, is a quick screen grab of uh, ArcGIS Pro, a 3D scene created in ArcGIS Pro of um, Arthur Seat here in Edinburgh. And again, the data sets used are included there, so you can see how that was done. If you're interested in creating these models, there are help pages on all of these uh, and our help system. Uh, if you go to the uh, using the data in GIS slash CAD pages, you'll get uh, detailed instructions how these were created. Okay, so that's uh, that's enough of the slides for now. What we'll do is we're going to jump in and actually do a live demo and just talk you through the system and how the data works and how it all hangs together. So Aerial Roam um, is is available, so anybody that subscribes to um, to the system can get access to this. Um, when you go to the system to start with the first three zoom levels show Ordnance Survey open data. So if I just zoom in, uh, let's go into Edinburgh. If we go in a couple of levels, the open data is displayed. And then once you get beyond that, um, you start to get the aerial imagery displaying. Now, the first thing you'll notice is there is actually some base map data being drawn first. And then on top of that, we're putting our aerial imagery. So you can expose the base map data below using this transparency slider here. So if I make it less opaque or more transparent, I can do the same going the other way. So you can expose the data that's beneath there and examine different areas. Uh, we've obviously got the full normal functionality that you get in all of our Roam clients. So if I just do a search for Greenwich, we'll zoom down to Greenwich in London. So there's the River Thames and the parks. Um, so one of the other things we've got in here is the overlays menu. We've got the road place name overlay. So this is very much similar to what you get in Google Maps where you can uh, display other features on top of the actual imagery. So we've got that available and that'll come out on your print maps as well. So you can turn that on and off using the overlays menu. We have a get feature information tool here. So if I click on the map in a particular location, You'll see what, what it does, it draws the actual boundary of the one kilometer tile and it tells you the tile name and when it was flown. So this one was flown in April 2013. Um, what you do get with some areas is you'll notice that you actually get two name, two dates flown. So in this particular tile, you'll see we've got two specific dates. And this is where the data is made up. Uh, from data from two different flights from get mapping and you can actually see this if you look on this particular tile You can kind of see a color change where my cursor is going at the moment and it follows this road feature And then this one down here in other areas. You'll see you get really hard um, Right angle boundaries. So if I click in this tile You'll see the date here is 2015 uh, and if I click on this tile, you'll see the date is 2014 and 2013. So these are three different dates across this little area here. So wherever possible, Get Mapping have tried to match the data to actual physical features on the ground. If I zoom right in here, uh, once it renders up, you see you can see the detail in here. It's really detailed. You get all these nice white lines down the road. You can see cars, you can see lampposts, things like that. Um, posts on people's driveways but you'll see there's actually a color change here where my cursor is so this is data from two different dates and get mapping have, have matched it edge matched it to physical features on the ground and they've done that wherever possible and it's certainly happening for the more recent data now but that's just something to be aware of if you click on a tile and see the dates that it was flown it's got two you can try and work out which bits which by clicking on adjacent tiles. So this bit was flown in 2013. So it would be a reasonable assumption to, to say that the eastern part of this tile was the 2013 data and the western part was from 2014. 
Okay, so the other functionality, it's all standard functionality uh, that you've got in here. Um, you can import and export your annotations and obviously create new ones through the annotations menu here. And we've got our import and export tabs here as well. You can open and save your maps through the My Maps option. So you can open them and save them through here. We've got the two tabs. And we've also got our standard annotation tools for creating there and also our measurement tools if you wanted to measure different areas. Finally, the printing options in here. We've got our print window. We've limited the printing so you can only print up to 1 to 175,000 scale and up to A3 size. Most of our other Rome clients let you print right up to A0. Um, and this gives you the option to, to generate really large print files if you've got access to a large format printer. But with the aerial data, because it's so detailed and the file sizes are really big, we've actually limited it. So the maximum size is A3 and a maximum scale range uh, up to 1 to 175,000. And basically at that sort of level, you're printing around 2,600 individual tiles, which are a few megabytes each. So obviously it makes your print file quite big. If you do have the need to print larger areas, we recommend you download the data and print from a GIS or CAD application where there's no limits on the, the scale and the size of pot file that you can generate. So one other thing I want to show you here, the, any eagle-eyed people uh, out there might have noticed I'm actually on our beta site today. We're not on our live site, we're actually on our beta site, which looks very similar to um, our live site, but we have an extra button at the top here, which is our two-up button. And if we click on this, what you can do now is you can flip the map into two-up mode and we can change the opacity of one of the maps. So here on the right-hand side, I'm setting the opacity right down. So you can see the modern map data beneath it. And you'll see when I click and drag the map, the two maps are, are completely synchronized. And if I create a feature on one of them, let's create a polygon. Let's just draw around this park. You'll see it'll get added to the second one at the at the point that I commit and save my change. Right, if I double click that, there we go. So there's our, our park feature. Let's just turn that off. And now the two the two maps are completely in sync and you can um, fade between them uh, either way if you wish. So we're adding our two of you to all of our Rome clients um, apart from uh, Chart Rome in Marine. Um, because all the other ones you can actually compare two different maps side by side so it's a really nice addition and that's just to give you a little preview that'll be going live um, tomorrow morning when we do our next uh, next release and there'll be a blog post and further information about that if you've got any questions okay so the second part of this is to show uh, the download service so I'm going to flip out of here and just jump into the downloader so, to aerial download i'm going to go into the new beta download this is one that we're we're using these days and uh, we recommend that you guys start using it as well wherever possible it's got all the same functionality as the original download clients the previous ones but it's been brought up to date with a new look and feel and it's got a little bit of added functionality in it um, which we'll go through so yeah if you if you're interested in browsing looking at the data or creating a map for a report or project then aerial roam is obviously the place you can go um, but if you want to do further analysis with any of the aerial imagery data so create a 3d scene for example or create bigger plot files then you need to come to the aerial download application and you can actually get hold of the raw data that we've got in here and take it out and do further things to it so just like all of our other downloads it's a three-step process you choose your area you choose your data and then you add it all to your basket so Let's just jump back to Greenwich. I'm down in London just for consistency. So again, we're not showing the actual aerial imagery data here. We're just showing the uh, on survey open data. It's just for context. Um, with our new Rome client, our new data download client, sorry, you've got multiple ways of choosing your area now. So previously in the old ones, you could only draw a rectangle. But now you can actually draw an irregular shape. So if you wanted to download this area south of the river, so there we go. You can actually download uh, irregular areas um, of data. So here I've just specified this particular area. The next thing is to choose my data. 
Now, we've got there's two categories of aerial imagery. We've got the latest data available, but we've also got it broken down by year. So if I expand them both, you'll see what we've got. And with every one, just like before, we've still got all of our availability grids. These are now accessed through this little grid icon against each particular data set. So if I turn this one up for the latest available data, you'll see that um, within each square, we've got the Ordnance Survey tile name, and we've also got the most recent dates that this tile was flown. So you'll see for some of these areas, it's 2015, some it's 2014. Across to the east here, it's 2013. So this is the most recently available data that we've got. If you're after data for a particular year, you can now download that using the by year category here. And again, let's just turn that grid off. If we go to the bottom for the most recent data, you'll see that we've actually got some, oops, sorry, that's still refreshing. Uh, the, this new grid's gonna come in. Um, do we have 2016 data for here? That's a good question. Let's try a different year. So you'll see that the data is really patchy. Okay, so obviously get mapping, they can't fly the whole country at any one time. So we've got some 2015 data for this area. We don't have any 2016 data. If we go back through the different years, look at the 2014 area, the coverage maps will come in and show you where that data is. So obviously the the data is, by its very nature, is very patchy. Get mapping can't fly the whole country at the same time because they need completely clear uh, cloud cover. There needs to be no other aviation activity in the area. There's a whole host of reasons um, that prevent them from flying areas at any one time. So the data that we've got in the system is made up. It's, it's effectively a mosaic of different capture dates. So when it's been flown um, by get mapping um, and captured, we've added it into the system. But obviously, if, if you're lucky enough to be studying an area where there's multiple years worth of data, then you can download that data from the system, see the dates it was flown, and you can do analysis of change over time. So here for Greenwich, we've got some data for 2015 and, and quite a large part of my study area, but we've also got data covering the whole area for 2014. But there's none for 2013, and you can go on and, and see all the different years of, of available data using those grids. Um, so when you download your data, so let's just take our latest available. So I'll be getting the, the mix of dates that are shown in this in this grid. When you download your data, um, there is a limit uh, put on the system, so you can only down 100 tiles at any one time. Um, the reason we've done this is because um, the the data set's really quite large. So individual tiles are around seven megabytes, uh, roughly. So if you take 100 of those, um, we're looking at 700 megabyte download. So if you want, you can easily download multiple orders for adjacent areas, that's not a problem. Um, and the easiest way of doing that is to use the reference grid. So a 10 by 10 kilometer grid is that amount of data you can download at any one time. So if you wanted to download the whole of London, you could just string together orders using these individual tile names. So here we've got the use tile name option, so we can put in TQ27, and, go. and that's the amount of data that you can take in one order. So if you wanted to download the whole of London, you just have to string together a number of orders to get hold of all of that data and get the latest available that you can there. Okay, so that's really the basics of the aerial Digimap service. What I wanted to do was um, just run another quick poll just to find out um, if you currently subscribe to the uh, aerial service. Uh, so yes, no, don't know. Um, please do let us know. Um, yeah, and hopefully this will be useful information for those that don't subscribe. Okay, that's most people responded. So yeah, so... Uh, uh, a couple of no's and a couple of don't know's, so that's uh, that's good. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was that if you subscribe to the aerial collection, you also get access to the LiDAR Digimap collection as well at no extra cost. It's bundled with the aerial Digimap collection, so you just pay for aerial Digimap and you get access to the LiDAR data as well. 
And the LiDAR collection contains a variety of the open data which uh, has been made available by the different government agencies for England, Scotland and Wales. So there is access to the raw point cloud data, um, that's only available for England and Scotland, but there are digital terrain models and digital surface models uh, available for all areas. So the data is sourced from the Environment Agency for England, the Scottish Environmental Protection Agency for Scotland and Natural Resources Wales for Wales. There is also a little bit of aerial imagery for England, which uh, the Environment Agency captured at the same time that they were capturing the LiDAR data. So just to give you a very quick overview of these different types of data, point cloud is the raw data format that's captured when they, they go out and they scan the ground. Um, it's an airborne uh, process, so they fire lasers at the ground and uh, measure the return rates from these lasers, and they capture points in space. So here's a little image of the point cloud data for the fourth rail bridge up here. Um, point cloud data is only available for England and Scotland at the moment. Natural Resources Wales haven't released any of it, but where it's available you can get hold of it. Now the two main types of LiDAR data are what are called digital surface model or DSM and digital terrain model or DTM. So the digital surface model is the surface that you would see as you look out of the window of an aeroplane, so it's what you would see on the ground. So here's a picture, I think this was Aberyst with Harbour. So these are actually boats moored up. You can make out the, um, the shape of, of certain boats and the, the pontoons that run down the middle. And then this is the breakwater across here. And you can see individual car features in here. So this is what you would see if you look out of the, the window of an aeroplane. And corresponding to that is the digital terrain model. And this is effectively what they call a bare earth model. So where they strip off all features, including vegetation, man-made features like buildings, things like that. And, uh, and you just get the ground surface that's there. So here we've got, this is the coastal area on the left of this image. We've got the breakwater feature here, and then this was the harbor feature. And you can make out the waves in the harbor, but obviously there's some artifacts here where they've stripped off the boat features and the pontoons and things like that. So they've, they've replaced it with a flat surface. So using this data, you can do really detailed modeling. So you can measure the heights of tree canopies, the volumes of tree canopies, things like that. You can do 3D modeling for buildings. The LiDAR data is much more detailed uh, to, in terms of the terrain model than you would get from the Ordnance Survey data. So it goes right down to 25 centimeter resolution whereas the most detailed you can get from modern surveys is a five meter resolution. So it's, it's orders of magnitude more detailed. So as I mentioned before, there is a bit of aerial imagery available in the LiDAR collection as well. This all came from the Environment Agency, so it's only available for England, and they captured it at the same time they were out scanning using the LiDAR sensors. So it all comes in an ECW format, which most image processing packages can read these days and there are four different types so true color near infrared four band and nighttime and as I mentioned before access to all this data is free for anybody that subscribes to the aerial collection and there's a little image of uh, that's a nighttime image of London Waterloo station you can just see the London eye on the top left here uh, nicely lit up so nighttime imagery is really it's really interesting but it's also good you know if you're doing studies around light pollution urban areas things like that Okay, finally, um, for those of you that uh, don't subscribe already, um, if you're interested, then the subscription uh, is directly with Adina, uh, as will um, all Digimap subscriptions going forward. Um, the price range uh, varies from just under £500, £2,500 plus VAT, depending on your HE band for your institution. So any users on the line, uh, speak to your local Digimap site representative. There's a link there in the slide. Or go on our help page and you'll see who your local site rep is and, and tell them you're interested in the aerial collection. Any site reps that are attending today, all the information on subscribing to the service is available at uh, that URL that's shown. Um, yeah, if you have any questions at any point, feel free to email us. Our email address is shown at the bottom there. Um, otherwise, we hope, thank you very much for attending the webinar today. We hope it was useful. Um, we will stick around for a few minutes to answer any questions you may have. Um, otherwise, yeah, thanks very much.